Hey everybody, happy Sunday to you all. I hope you are staying safe and well and enjoying um, some normalcy as we are seeing a lot of places uh, have been reopened or are starting to reopen. Some of them modified, some businesses sadly um, have gone under. I mean, there's just a lot of things going on. So one, I'm curious for those of you who are back out in Normalville again, um, are you guys taking precautions? Are you somebody that still wears a mask? Are you still practicing some form of social distancing? Um, or are you just kind of like, hey, I'm over it all and I'm just back out there and we'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, I'm just curious kind of your guys' feedback depending on where you're watching from. I know I get viewers from lots of different places, so I'm always curious depending on where you're at in the world, what's going on, and thank you in advance for sharing that. It's always interesting. Um, myself, you know, being out here in California, we were one of the later states to um, kind of get back into the swing of things somewhat. And I am one of those weird people that still likes to wear a mask. I know I'll get comments on that, I'm sure. But yeah, I mean, I guess I should say not in every situation, but more so in, you know, closer confined indoor, you know, stores, things like that. I'm still kind of just, to me, nothing's really changed other than, you know, the state makes different rules and that's a whole nother, a whole nother thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm still kind of being cautious. I've always been that way. I'm a hypochondriac. I've mentioned this on other videos. Um, on a good day, I'm a hypochondriac already. So with all this stuff going on, I'm just um, definitely relying heavily on my faith. And so I'm just kind of leaving it in God's hands. But um, I still am practicing you know, I, I call it kind of common sense, but you know, again, to each his own, but everybody has their own way and back on to the track of cigars. Let's go with my weekly top five. I've been rambling on a little bit in the start of this video, but um, I kind of have a mix. I'm still going through my humidor. Um, I have had a few different um, newer cigars that have been added, but I will be adding more and posting more of those reviews. I have, I'll have to admit I'm a little bit behind on my editing, so I'm sorry about that. I've had a lot of things going on um, off camera, but um, we'll get back on track here shortly, God willing. So starting with number five, I'm actually smoking this beautiful Fratello, and this is only my third time I wanna say smoking this particular cigar. This is the DMV. It's part of a regional type of um, line, I guess you could say, from Fratello Cigars. Really enjoyed it. Um, these, I believe, are made at La Aurora Cigar Factory, and they are excellent. This one in particular, um, the different bands, and again, I'm I kind of just giving you a brief overview because it's not a full review, but just to give you like a quick um, background on these cigars, there's four or five different color bands, but they all have the same blend is how I'm understanding it. And again, I, I asked Omar, we did a cool little um, pairing cigar, uh, cigar and coffee pairing video together on his platform. He has a YouTube channel also where he does um, what he calls imperfect pairings. So a lot of fun. We did like a FaceTime call, a Zoom call, um, had some technical difficulties along the way, ended up finishing our call on Instagram. So it was kind of interesting. You know, again, all these fun different platforms that are out there. I've done several of these type of FaceTime interview calls, whatever you wanna, you wanna name them. Um, but that one was fun. So I sent him my coffee, he sent me his, he also has a coffee. And so it was a lot of fun to kind of compare notes and we smoked the same cigar and we were talking about, you know, which he was actually drinking a cup of my coffee that I had sent him and his own um, and, and doing them side by side, which I thought was really cool because it was an evening call. And I said, wow, you know, you're gonna be up all night. I couldn't do that. I had a cup of, um, of his coffee that I had brewed um, and I limited myself to like half a cup just because it was again an evening call and I'm like if I drink a whole cup of coffee tonight I'm gonna be up all night so um, anyways it was fun you should check it out Imperfect Pairings and it was an episode um, again me and Omar just kind of I don't even know what we were talking about we were talking about cigars we we're talking about coffee we we're talking about just the world and I don't know random things as they were coming up totally unscripted just a bunch of nonsense it was fun but anyways, this cigar itself is featuring a, it's a Havana Vuelta Arriba's Ecuadorian wrapper, Sumatra Ecuadorian binder, and then Dominican, Nicaraguan, and U.S. on the filler. And I think it just went out. I had it lit and I've been blabbing too much. So to me, it has a, 
it has a La Aurora-ish feel to it, if that makes sense. If you are somebody who smokes a lot of um, cigars that come from La Aurora factory, you'll understand what I'm saying. It has a noticeable La Aurora presence in it. Um, there's an underlying sweetness and a very subtle, subtle spice that kind of lingers in after the fact. Um, but it's really tasty. I, I, I enjoyed the flavor profile on this one in particular. Um, and yeah, I mean, I encourage you, again, they're, they're regional, but if you go on his website, you can find out more specific information, again, for tellocigars.com, um, or, you, or you ask um, ask him directly, like on Facebook, um, Omar De Frias, he'll give you um, a lot more information. Because again, sometimes when I jump onto people's websites, it has very limited information. And then again, I asked him about it, but we were chit-chatting and I, I forgot all the details. So sorry, I kind of failed you guys on that one. I'm just bringing to mind um, this particular stick and then kind of giving you guys the homework of like, hey, go go bug Omar and have him tell you because he makes it and he can tell you directly like all the information, all the details on it. But it's a really good stick. If you can find it, um, that would be great. And if not, he has a bunch of different cigars in his lineup that I'm sure you guys have heard of by now and have hopefully tried. But um, anyways, moving on to number four. We have this Punch Knuckle Buster. So this is a newer one, um, somewhat newer in this year. Um, I can't remember when I received it. I want to say a couple months back. So it should be out and about at many retailers as of now. The Knuckle Buster, um, yeah, so it's another newer, 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 newly introduced cigar by Punch. I can't talk today. Um, and this one has a funny, you know, with the name and all that, but it's really meant to be kind of more of a, of a, um, budget-friendly stick, I guess is the nice way you can say it. So they're um, basically under six bucks, three different sizes. Um, so it's a good good deal on uh, the price point on it. And it's featuring a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and the Nicaraguan and Honduran, Honduran filler. And yeah, so you're gonna get some different notes, a little bit earthy. You have a nice earthy aroma actually when you first light it up. Um, nice cedar background, earth and hay, cinnamon pepper, that kind of spiciness that kind of goes in and out. Um, not too crazy on like the flavors overall, but it's good. And again, it's a nice price point and it's always fun to find um, those cigars that fall anywhere under the $10 point. I'm always like a fan of those cigars when done well. Because it's, um, we all, as we've discussed often, we all have like the expensive habit of keeping our humidors stocked up. So, um, yeah, so here we are. So, number three, speaking of La Aurora, uh, this is the La Aurora Maduro. Been around for a long time. You guys have probably seen this on my top five before. I have many of these in my humidor, so, um, La Aurora is another brand that's kind of a go-to for me. I have a lot on hand usually, and um, they just never let me down. I'm a huge fan, especially on their on their Maduro lines, which they have, you know, different um, different offerings for the Maduro fans that are out there. And um, made very well, of course. That's the oldest factory in the DR. Big uh, fan of their of their cigars and of, of course of their master blender Manuel Inoa. I've spoken of him many times. Um, he's a good friend and he's a beautiful blender. Um, he has a wonderful palette and um, just really brings a lot of detail and overall, you know, balance to all the cigars that that he makes for them. So it's a really nice offering again um, with a nice Brazilian wrapper, Nicaraguan binder and filler this time on that one. So very nice, rich, earthy profile. Um, little blasts of pepper, you get the raisin sweetness, you have a nuttiness, um, a little bit of coffee bean in there too, but just a really nice, well-rounded, um, easy Maduro to smoke and easy to find. You should be able to find a La Aurora Maduro in pretty much uh, you know, any and every humidor out there, I would think. That's a pretty well-known, easy to find one. So hopefully you can find it. Um, moving on to number two, we have the Cimarron. So this one is an offering by El Artista Cigar. They had two that they brought out, a Maduro and a Habano. Um, and I'm a big fan of the Maduro. That one just right up my alley has a nice Mexican San Andres wrapper on it. Uh, Negrito binder, which is used on their... The Negrito binder is used on their... I want to say on the Big Poppy Cigar because El Artista makes Big Papi, they make the Cimarron, they make, um, gosh, what's the other one? The Buffalo 10, which was another one that I had um, talked a lot about last year, I believe, or earlier this year. 
Um, that one was like a really nice budget friendly stick. It was like a $5 stick. But anyways, the Cimarron, not far off from that as far as price point, it's not super expensive. Made really well, nice flavor if you're a Maduro fan especially. Um, as I mentioned, you have the Mexican San Andres wrapper, Negrito binder, and then you have the filler, um, which is Colombian and US. So you get, uh, for me, it's like, reminds me of the Mexican chocolate because you have the sweet and spicy element. You have a nice cinnamon, you know, underlying in there. And then you have that sweet kind of a, you know, chocolatey, but also sugary something mixed into the whole thing. So it's a really nice cigar. Again, um, I like it, especially with coffee. Um, you could do it with rum. It's pretty much one of those kind of any time of day for me personally, especially if you're a Maduro person, um, a great way to go. So definitely recommend that one. I've had it on my top five before. It's been a little while that I can recall that I've had it on there. And then number one, I haven't smoked in a little while actually, but um, again, I was going through my humidor and I was really excited because I found a couple like towards the back that I didn't realize that I had, and that's the Tabernacle. So the Tabernacle, of course, blended by Nick Melillo. It was his, I want to say it was his second, second or third offering, you know, when he first launched the Foundation Cigar Company, which of course, um, Nick Melillo has a very extensive history in the cigar world. He used to work for Drew Estate and then of course went solo, launched his own brand and has been killing it. And he comes up with really cool um, different blends and not just the blends, but also the, the overall presentation. Like he's really into art and he's really into history. And so he really brings that forth in the names that he comes up with for his different cigars. And then again, the, the overall presentation, the band on this one is just absolutely gorgeous. So much detail, um, the box, everything is just um, kind of a masterpiece. And again, a beautiful history, um, needless to say, naming, you know, the tabernacle and just the whole overall story, which I invite you to check out his website, foundationcigars.com. Um, just so much information and so well thought out and I'm always, again, very impressed with that because not everybody takes the time to do that. And you can really tell it kind of separates those that are creating, you know, the, the cigars because they absolutely have a passion for it versus those that are just trying to make a buck. So um, I've mentioned it many times before, but certainly if you've never tried any of Nick's cigars, um, you should, they're worth it. I mean, they're, they're absolutely wonderful. And I know there's a lot of you who um, know Nick or you've gone to events where he's there and um, can also agree that he just has a really neat personality, very humble, but extremely knowledgeable and, um, yeah, just a really cool person and makes some great cigars. So definitely check him out. Tabernacle is just one of many that he has to offer. And, um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed that top five. I'm sorry. I kind of rambled on a little bit. I also wanted to mention and give a shout out to, um, a couple people I've received some really cool gifts recently and I'm always appreciative of that Sometimes I take a little bit longer to make a video and, and talk about it But this is one I get um, I wanted to address this because I get asked the question Very often from a lot of people because they see me smoking indoors and they say well How do you keep you know your your area here? Um, from stinking like cigars after the fact and all of that because you know when we're smoking the cigars It's very nice, but then afterwards sometimes it has that stagnant ashtray smell, which is not very pleasant well one of the ways I do that is with candles. Um, I am a girl, I do love candles, but this one is actually really neat. This was sent to me, and this is my second um, in their uh, candle line that they offer from Plume Candles. This one smells just absolutely wonderful. It reminds me, literally, I mean, it's, it's named perfectly. It's called Pub, and it's kind of, kind of like a middle finger to the COVID-19 virus, basically, literally um, on the, the tag here. But it's really kind of, just paying tribute to like, hey, you know, we can't all get together, but light this candle is kind of like a, you're in your home as like a remembering the times when you could get together, you know, at the pub or wherever it may be, but it's kind of cool. So definitely give them a shout out, follow them on Plume Candles. You can find them on Instagram. They also sell their candles on Etsy. And again, it smells fabulous. They're hand poured, um, beautiful candles and a wonderful aroma. So I have a couple of these that I light up after you know, I'm done smoking. Um, I, I also have um, many, many windows. So I open those and I have some fans and I have two rabbit air units. But um, even when I'm not smoking, I light the candles pretty much every day and I just like the aroma, but that one is really nice. And so I received that as a recent gift. And thank you very much for that. And then 
I've mentioned them before and I always butcher the name, so I apologize in advance, but these are some cool little accessories that I received. This is like a little sleeve to hold my nice little cutter. This one um, has, it has a tobacco leaf um, kind of etched on here on this beautiful leather pouch, which is on the inside, it's like a suede. So really nice way to store if you're somebody that, um, well, for me, you know, carries my, I carry my accessories a lot of the time in my purse, or if you throw one in a backpack or in a bag or in your car, or wherever you keep your stuff, um, it's a nice way to keep your things protected. So this is nice. Um, and again, it goes, it's like a sheath that protects this little cutter here from, here I go butchering their name, from Le Fin Lame, I think is how you say it. It's a, they're a French company and um, beautiful accessories that they have. They have a, some really nice collections that they've added, but um, I just wanted to kind of take the time to show this edition, which is this beautiful sleeve. And it actually matches this other one here. So this is a, a holder to hold your cigar when you're not smoking it. You can kind of set it down like that and it has their emblem on there. But it also, that folds down and breaks off into this little pouch too that you can store and you can keep them both. They're very compact, they fit in anything. It's wonderful and they're beautiful and nice quality leather. Just like so. So you can throw these, they're really, again, very compact. Um, these make a great gift, by the way, for you know Father's Day, for birthdays, um, things like that. They have, uh, again, a beautiful line of accessories on cutters, and they're really um, just top-notch. So I invite you to check them out as well, and thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great week, and stay safe, everybody. Cheers.